Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen. And in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello, Pastor Sam here, and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. Thank you for joining me on the program today. I believe God has something special in store for you, so please stay tuned for the next half hour. I'm sharing a message with you that I call, believe it or not, Amazing Grace. And yes, I borrowed that title. Everybody knows the old song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. But have you experienced God's grace personally? Do you know what it is to be washed in the blood? Do you know what it is to be forgiven? Do you know what it is to be redeemed? Well, today in this message, I talk about the power of Amazing Grace. I believe God wants you to personally experience His grace today. If you would like this message, all you have to do is call me at 804-744-8881, and I'll send it to you absolutely free. And that's the entire message, all the good singing, the choir music, everything on CD. So just call me now at 804-744-8881, and that's my gift to you. So open your heart wide as we go into this service where the power of God is moving, and I'm speaking on the subject, God's amazing grace. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 reads like this, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Notice how many times in this verse you see all and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Everything you need, whatever you need, all you need is included in God's amazing grace. Somebody say praise the Lord. Now, that begs the question, what is grace? And you could say grace is God's unmerited favor, and that's true. You could even use it as an acronym, God's riches at Christ's expense. But it's so much more than that. Hebrews 4.16 says that we're to come boldly under the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and receive grace to help in the time of need. Now, notice it said come boldly before the throne of what? The throne of grace, not the throne of judgment. Do you realize that as a child of God, you will never stand in judgment before God? The great white throne judgment is a time when those who have rejected Christ, who have spurned the love of God and salvation and grieved the Holy Spirit by their disobedience and trampled underfoot the precious blood of Jesus without which there is no remission of sins, will hear these words, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, into the everlasting fire of hell. Now, there is the judgment seat of Christ, which uh, takes place after the rapture, but the purpose of it is to simply reward uh, the church for uh, their faithfulness and uh, for the good works uh, of believers. So make sure that they'll receive a reward. It is a judgment of evaluation, but not condemnation. Romans 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. This is the throne of grace. Everybody say grace. grace. So you're to come boldly. You're to come with a clean heart and, a, and an open heart and a, uh, to come uh, with a, a transparent motive. And, and you're to come knowing that you will obtain mercy. Now notice this is not a, a, an attainment but an obtainment. It's not something you earn. It's not something that you deserve. This is a gift. So he says, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. You may obtain mercy and that you will receive grace to help <clears throat> in the time of need. There is a difference between mercy and grace. Mercy is God's guarantee that you will not get what you deserve. 
The Bible says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. I don't want what I deserve. I deserve to go to hell. But God has made sure that I do not get what I deserve because of mercy. Titus 3 and 5. Not by works of righteousness, but according to his mercy, he saved us. But grace is a legal term. It is a binding legal term. It is irrevocable. It is uh, ir irreversible. It, 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 it is binding. And, and in Romans 8 and 2, Paul called it the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So what it means is that grace uh, is God's promise that I will get what I don't deserve. See, I don't deserve love, love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faithfulness. I don't deserve purpose and significance. I don't deserve power. I don't deserve him to love me. I, I don't deserve uh, all the blessings that, that God has, has uh, uh, given to me. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath passed and blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, so that God has held in reserve all these wonderful blessings for those who by grace can access uh, the, 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 the throne room of God and come before him and open our hearts to receive all that God has for us. If you go back to the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, God says he will give you grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly before him. Can you say praise the Lord somebody? So, I, I, I want you to understand that grace guarantees that you and I as believers will get everything we need spiritually, physically, and materially. Now, I, I think that when he says all things, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you're always having all sufficiency in all things. I think all things can be broken down into three categories. Are you ready? How many of you are ready for this? All right. Number one. God's grace is sufficient to meet your material needs. How many of you have material needs? Now, you know, the book of Proverbs says, money answereth all things. But the way that God provides for your material needs is not the way the world provides for material needs. Uh, Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. And he said, it'll come back good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And then he said something like this, shall men give into your bosom? See, the key to prosperity is grace. If you really want to uh, prosper, beloved, I, will, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Uh, Peter said that God's given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Matthew 6, 33, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, how many country folk we got in here? Anybody from the country? I'm as country as cornbread. Anybody ever carry any firewood? Anybody? And how did you carry it? Well, here's, I get a piece in this hand, a piece in here. I'm coming in with the firewood. You usually have somebody helping you, right? And you say, okay, pile it up there. And you do it like this. You do, everybody do your arms like this. And then they start loading you up and they stack it up. That's what Jesus is saying. He said, give one time. And then seven different times he talks about how it will come back to you. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Seven different times he talks about receiving. So I think that's where the sevenfold blessing comes in. Now what he says, I'll give it to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. But now watch this. He's not printing $20 bills in heaven. He said, shall men give into your bosom. See, You're, this is the way you carry the wood, like this. And God says, I'm going to make sure men just stack it up and load it up. And what he'll do is he'll cause people to give you favor. And by the way, favor ain't fair. Come on now. He'll cause people to give to you and bless you. There are people that like me and don't even know why they like me. There are people that would like to hate me but can't because of the favor of the Lord on my life. You can be blessed. And the Bible says that it begins with you honoring the covenant that you have with God. You're in a covenant of love and faith, but grace is the key to the plan. God says 
by my grace, I'm going to make sure you get everything that you need and I'll make sure that the blessings are coming your way. But all I'm asking you to do is open the way for me to work. Bring the tithe into the storehouse and the offerings. And God said, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. See, in the natural, in the world, when you give, you have less after you give. Hello? But see, we're not in the world or of the world, so it doesn't work that way for us. When we give, we receive. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're letting on this morning. How many of you want to have your needs met? Well, that you've got, what is it we say in our, our faith statement when we give? If the Lord can get it through me, <laughs> he can still get it to me. You have to become a channel of blessing so that when you give, it opens up the way for the blessings of the Lord to flow into our lives. We cannot outgive God. Somebody say amen. amen. So grace is the key. Somebody said, well, I think I know how it is. It's, it's, it's the lot, lottery. That's what it is. And, man, the, you know, back a few weeks ago, what was it, $400 million? Guy came by. He said, listen, I, I'm playing this lottery ticket here, and I want you to pray over it. I said, brother, we do not gamble. I never bought a lottery ticket in my life. He said, well, I was going to give it all to church. I said, let me anoint that with oil right now for, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but I like God's blessing plan better, Amen. In fact, God said he'll give you wealth and add no sorrow with it. Most of the wealthy people I know that just have money and nothing else are the most miserable people that I know. But I'm glad I can be blessed and there's no sorrow that comes with it. Hallelujah. Touch somebody and say, I'm blessed. God said he would supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If he had to take up the streets of gold, sell the walls of jasper and the gates of pearl, put the angels on half ration and mortgage the mansions of heaven, he would do it before he would let you down. He will always find a way to bless you. Somebody say praise God. So God's grace, God's grace will provide for our material needs. Amen? Now, I want to share something else with you. Number two, are you ready for this? God's grace is sufficient for our physical needs. Now, regardless of what you believe, if I understand Scripture, there were times when Paul had infirmities, and he mentioned oft infirmities. He mentioned being battered. He mentioned being uh, tormented by the enemy. He was attacked. And I'm certain that part of that was a physical attack. And so he suffered in his body. He talks about afflictions. He talks about being in prison. Some of us, if the temperature is above 73, we're going to quit the church. But you put Paul in a dungeon after you beat him brutally and mercilessly, and he'll sing songs and bring the glory down. We're, we're, a different kind, we're a different breed today, aren't we? We don't even want to be inconvenienced, much less take up our cross and follow Jesus. And, 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 and so there are times when he was afflicted for the cause of Christ. He even told the Lord, Lord, what's this all about? Hey, come see about me. I've got some trouble in my life. I've had some problems in my life. And he said, I heard the Lord say, Oh, I'm about to shout. I heard the Lord say to me, my grace is sufficient for thee. Hallelujah. See, you can go back. Somebody say, oh, I don't know. I'm not going to get sick because I'm living in divine health. Well, have you ever been to the dentist since you got saved? Do you ever have a cavity? Because if you got a cavity, oops, you're not living in divine health. Did you get a wrinkle since you got saved? Because if you did, you're not living in divine health. You're going... <laughs> Don't look at me like you say, oh, you know I'm telling the truth. Everybody, I'm in divine health. I'm glad you're in good health, but you're not in divine health. You know what divine health is? Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You know what divine health is? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. These bodies that are sown in weakness will be raised in power, sown in dishonor, raised in glory, sown a natural body, raised a spiritual body. See, I, somebody said, well, I, I think you're pretty healthy. I'm, I'm in great health. My mother-in-law used to say I was disgustingly healthy. I don't know what that meant. I've been in good health, you know, 
I, I, the only time I was actually really in the hospital uh, is when I was born and I wanted to be close to my mother. She was in the hospital. I had a motorcycle wreck and I ended up in there for a few days. But other than that, I'm in great health, but I'm not in divine health. You know why? Look at my forehead. You see all this stuff? I need to put some wood putty up in here or something. I don't look at myself. I told, I went to a dermatologist the other day because I'm at that age, you know. And I, I said, uh, you know, uh, what do you think? And she said, well, you know, for your age, you, you look fine. She said, do you have any questions? I said, I do, ma'am. I, I, I've, I've got a problem. I said, I'm standing in my uh, bathroom looking at myself in the mirror, and there's some old guy that's standing in front of me won't get out of the way so I can see me, you know. I realize I'm getting older. That's just a part of life. And if the Lord tarries his coming, guess what? I'll die one of these days. But if I, if I die today, glory to God, I'm ready to see Jesus and I'll live forever. And one of these days, I'll have a glorified body just like Jesus had. Amen? But when I get sick, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I can still go back to Isaiah 53. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. There's still a bomb in Gilead. There's still a healer, and his name is Jesus. In fact, the Bible says, is there any sick among you? James chapter 5. Let him call for the elders of the church, and let the elders anoint him with oil and pray the prayer of faith, and the Lord shall raise him up. Mark chapter 16, verse 18. Among the signs that Jesus said would follow believers was this. You shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I'm not worried about my future because I know where I'm going. And where I'm going is better than where I've been. And the glorified body that I'm going to have is better than the body I've got right now. But I still believe that God is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord God Almighty who heals us and makes his bitter experiences sweet. I'm not going to instruct God, what you've got to do this now, right now, because I say it, and you've got to obey me, and you've got to do it. God's still sovereign. I said God's still sovereign, and i got a news bulletin. God is God, and you ain't God. Amen. Tell somebody, especially you husbands, won't tell your wife, tell her, you're not God, and tell her I said so. Go ahead right now. You are not God. God is God all by himself. And if God chooses to call me home, I'm ready to go. I've been longing to go for a long time. Don't sing any sad songs at my funeral. It'll be a celebration. I'll be home at last. Hallelujah. But in the meantime, I'm still going to trust God as my healer. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. So the grace of God provides all things. I can be healed. And here's the last one. And, and I'm not going to preach long. I really am, but I'm saying that to make you feel better. <laughs> we are blessed spiritually because of God's grace. Salvation is by grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. How many of you know you're saved? Say amen. amen. You know you've passed from death unto life. One of the reasons that you know that you've passed from death unto life is because you love one another. If you're out of sync with the church and you're out of fellowship with your brother, guess what? You might need to go back to the altar and find out if you got saved. Hello? And if we are washed in the blood, we have fellowship with him. And John said, that which we've seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with the Father and with his Son and with us. So we're all in this together. And today I'm proud to tell you that I'm born again, washed in the blood. My name's written in heaven. But I also let you know that I can't boast about it because I didn't do it. God did it. All I had to do was receive what God had already provided for me at Calvary. I wasn't saved by good works. You say, well, what's the purpose of good works then? Corresponding actions. Corresponding actions. If you say you believe in tithing, you should tithe. If you believe in praying, you should pray. If you, hello. 
Whatever you say you believe in, you ought to do it. Your practices ought to be commensurate with your doctrines. Whatever you say you believe, you ought to do it. And then when you do it, men will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's what I'm talking about. They said there was years ago back after the Depression, you know, they'd do stunts. And there's a fellow that stretched a tightrope across uh, two, from two buildings in New York City out on Times Square. And he was pushing a wheelbarrow. He's blindfolded. And he would push a wheelbarrow across there. And people, of course, they were watching that, you know, and they'd put money in the hat. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And uh, they, they, he wasn't getting as much money as he thought. So the, the fellow down on the ground was kind of the PR guy. And he's telling everybody, he said, come on, folks. You want to see that again? Don't you believe you can do it? Some people just come up on the site they didn't see the first time. Do you believe he can do it? And I don't know. Do you believe you can, he can do it? Come on, if you believe him, do it. put some money in his hat and he'll do it again. And one of the fellows bold enough said, do you believe he can do it? And he said, well, sure I believe it. He said, well, why don't you go up and get in a wheelbarrow? <laughs> Amen. So a lot of people are talking big talk. I believe God can do anything. Well, where's your corresponding actions then? Where's your faith? <laughs> I'll, show you my, I'll show you my faith with, by my corresponding actions. Amen. Now, now watch this. You're saved by grace. You didn't deserve it. When we get to heaven, every scar that you ever had, every, everything, some of you had surgeries. Some of you look like a, a, a railroad track. They opened you up and... You had anybody here open heart surgery? Raise your hand. Anybody? It's not to be ashamed of. You had it. Who else has had it? You know, I, if I were a doctor, and I, of course I'm not, but if I were, I, I'd be famous because I would invent a zipper where you didn't have to cut people open anymore. Just once you had it, because you might have to have another one. Just zip, okay. Zip it back up. Of course, I wanted to do the same thing with a banana, too, if I didn't want to eat the whole banana. That, that, that needs to go, you know, back to the drawing board. But I think that some of you know what it is to have scars. I got 50 stitches right here. I knocked a guy's two front teeth out. Play, I was playing football. It wasn't malicious, but it was pure accident, but it happened. I'd been much rather it had been my arm than his teeth. He's standing there with no teeth. And I looked down, and he had opened my arm up. I had to go to the doctor. Uh, right on, you know, took me right away and sewed me up and 50 stitches. I got a bad scar right here. I got scars. I said something about Wednesday night about having scars and being hit by my sisters with a rock. My sister wrote me afterwards. She said, I watched that. I'm really sorry about hitting you with a rock, but you deserved it. And she said, I might come down there and hit you with another rock for saying it. But when I get to heaven, I won't have any of those scars. They'll be all gone. But when I look up to the throne, I'll see Jesus and there'll be scars in his hands. There'll be scars in his feet and his ribbon sign. Why? As a reminder of how much it cost me to be saved. The price of redemption was the death of Jesus on Calvary. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Jesus died on the cross because the righteous demands of a just God had to be met. But Jesus paid the total price so that I could go free. Hallelujah. It's prayer time now, and let's believe God as we pray. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love for me. I thank you for your wonderful grace that knows no limits. And I need you now. Please meet every need in my life. Please, Lord, have mercy on me, but extend your grace to me so that I can enjoy all the blessings and benefits that you've promised. And I will give to you the praise, the glory, and the honor forever. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, glory to God. I believe the Lord's heard my prayer. I believe when you prayed that prayer, you connected with heaven. I want to hear from you. Please call me right now at 804-744-8881. And when you call, request the message, God's Amazing Grace. I'll send it to you absolutely free, postpaid, no strings attached. It's just my gift to you. After you experience the grace of God in your life, the most important thing is to find the right church. You know, in the Bible, it says that the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. 
So today I want to invite you to join us here at the Victory Tabernacle Church of God, 11700 Genito Road here in Midlothian, Virginia. When 10 o'clock we begin our praise celebration and it's two full hours of praise and worship, ministry from the Word of God, and always a time together in His presence around the altar. So be sure to join us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Also remember that the last Sunday of each month is our miracle service, which means we have an additional service in the evening at six o'clock in the chapel. And God is confirming his word with mighty signs and wonders and miracles. And then remember every Wednesday evening, you can find us here in our family enrichment night service beginning at seven o'clock. It's fun, exciting, and relevant. We have something special for every age group and every member of the family. Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a, a, a special program for youth called Battle Cry. And we also have a ministry to college and career age young people called The Vine. And our Hispanic congregation will meet in the chapel. So be sure to join us. And also remember that we are live streaming now all of our services over Facebook and you stream it. For more information, you can go to our website. That's victorytab.org. And while you're there, check out our 24 hour radio internet network called Victory Battle Cry. You'll be glad you did. Once again, if you'd like the message that you heard on God's Amazing Grace, all you have to do is call us now at 804 744 8881 and we'll send it to you right away. Once again, the number is 804 744 8881. Thank you for joining me on the program together uh, today. And until we're together again, just like this around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that here at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen. If you have a smartphone, download the Victory Tab app. Just go to your app store, type in Victory Tab, and download our app to your phone you'll find tremendous resources that you can use throughout your day. It's everything Victory Tabernacle, as well as extra apps, a Bible app, notes, a light, various items that you'll use off your phone throughout the entire day. So download our Victory Tab app to your smartphone today. Get the latest Victory Tab information by going to Facebook, just by typing in Victory Tab into your Facebook search. You can also join us in conversation by going to Twitter or Instagram, typing in Victory Tab RVA. 